platinum artist from Riverside, California, and one of our favorite artists, Ivan Cornejo. Yeah. And is there a meaning behind every song that you write? Personal experiences? No, I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> he's trying, he's trying, he's trying, he's trying. There's a lot of achievements that I'm very proud of. Um, for example, winning my first Billboard Award, being able to meet Bad Bunny, which is kind of... <laughs> I seen he was like right behind me, and so I just pulled out the charts, and I was like, look, I, 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 didn't, I didn't really tell him anything, I was just like, like that. He's like, what's this kid trying to tell me? He looked at me again, and then I, I showed him, and I was like, that's me, that's me. And then he was like, oh, eres tú. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To be expecting anything? Oh. You got to the point where you're like, I made it. If I was in my shoes like two years ago and I seen where I'm at right now, yeah. But yeah. what is your like dream girl? Like, What do you look at? What, what matters to you? Like, what's my type? Like, that her eyes stand out. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> who's she looking at? Danielo tour. Sheesh. A lot of people are mad. A lot of people are upset. I know everybody's asking why we chose small venues. Well, it was because. Front and center, it's a movie scene when I enter. Better get your man if he's sentimental. <laughs> you ready or what? Ready. <clears throat> you ready to? <laughs> Alright, let's go. I forgot everything. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Agusha Baba Pod pa, pa, Podcast. Damn, I'm fucking nervous for some reason. The number one podcast in the Regional Mexicano. Right. If you guys are new to this channel, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Don't be part of the 70% of the people who view our videos and don't subscribe. Yeah. If you guys are watching this video and if you guys subscribe, we can literally get to like half a million Have subscribers. Day. And then we'll Please be able to bring more artists. Have any artists that you guys want? You guys comment like, hey, bring this person on. Like, they'll be on like this. That's but, right. And I like what I always like to say. Thank you guys for all the support. If it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be doing the cool stuff and having these amazing artists. But who do we got on today, bro? I'm ready to bring them in. <laughs> guys, today we have a very special guest. I even wrote an intro for him. Today we have a very special guest, the most asked for artist on this podcast by our audience. God, Today we present the 18-year-old who is on top of the Regional Mexicano, platinum artist from Riverside, California, and one of our favorite artists, Ivan Cornejo. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Damn, oh, what's up, my boy? My boy, my boy, my boy. <laughs> Long time to <laughs> <no> see. <laughs> what's up, man? Yeah, Bro, I apologize for lagging last week. It's because I was no. kind of sick. Well, I lost my voice. You're good, bro. You're good. But, you know, I feel so bad. But it's awesome to have you back. It's been like a year and a half since you last came on. Okay. I think um, I think so much has changed. Esta uh, Dañada won eight times platinum. You're at a million followers on Instagram. You did a song with Jayco. You're at an after party with Bad Bunny. How does it feel like to be Ivan Cornejo? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, bro. Big, man. I'm still the same person. I feel like it's just, you know, I've learned a lot of stuff and I've gone through a lot of stuff and it's just new experiences. It's crazy, bro. Yeah. Damn, bro. More than anything, I want to say congrats on all your success. You've done a lot for the genre in a short amount of time. I think you've inspired a lot of musicians, a lot of upcoming artists. But I want to ask you, what are some things that have changed mm -hmm. since you last last been on the podcast, which mm -hmm. was about a year ago? I mean, I feel like a lot of things change when it comes to music. My music, I feel like it's developed a lot. The people I work with is different. It's like, I mean, I still work with, you know, my cousin. And then I feel like... Um, I'm work recording wise, it's a lot different. So the sound is different, and just you know, experiences, different kinds yeah, of experiences. Dope. Yeah. And I mean, you, as a young, <laughs> <laughs> as a young successful, eighteen year old, how do you deal with fame? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, oh God, well, I feel like it's it doesn't feel like fame to me. Like, I don't feel famous. You know, it's just you don't feel famous. I mean, I don't feel as famous. Like, I have a question for you. Like, Do you think you already made it? Like, you got to the point where you're like, I made it. If I was in my shoes like two years ago and I seen where I'm at right now, yeah. But 
but like looking at myself now and like i feel like my goals have grown so much from we're well, on to like year. the next goal now and like you kind of get used to like your life now huh yeah i mean i feel like it hasn't changed much it's just i mean it has but it's like i'm still the same person you still feel like the same kid yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i don't really like focus too much on the changes but it's like like my goals have just grown so much from from last year and it's like i'm still aiming for success the same mm -hmm. way as i was with the year. same hunger yeah yeah Damn. it's not like i'm not gonna like slack because oh i think i made it you know i mean i think that's dope that you have that mentality and i mm -hmm. feel like you it seems like you're really prioritizing your your goals and you know the, the your music your music career mm -hmm. i don't know if you would say that um you know the things around you could be a distraction for example you know fame partying and i could yeah, see bro. that you know you're still <laughs> aiming you know through those goals and maybe yeah. you could talk a little bit in terms of like what goals do you have mm -hmm. shoot well i have a lot of goals i feel like my goals have grown i want to say like like last year for example my goal was like i wish i hope one day one of my songs hits a million views you know and you know that happened and it just keeps growing and i feel like now it's just um you like surpass that by a lot you know yeah and then i i still you know i still have goals like when it comes to views or like success wise but i feel like mainly my goal is just to enjoy my career you know like enjoy whatever i'm doing the process yeah because i feel like if you don't enjoy what what you're doing or the process of what you're aiming for and you're not you're not gonna have you're not gonna fun, enjoy you're not it gonna right? enjoy it and it's you're not gonna be as successful and now that this has been like your career your life basically how much of your day do you dedicate to like music i feel like a lot because even when i'm not like working on music i feel like listening to music in the car is almost like working a little bit it's getting like, ideas and stuff yeah yeah like i'll listen because i listen to like a bunch of different genres and so i feel like I, I listen to a bunch of genres and so in every genre i try to find i just you know i pick some takeaways yeah 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 and i just analyze music when i listen to it so i would say a lot what are some of your favorite like <laughs> artists and songs right now favorite artists it doesn't I have, have a lot. like that region. I could be like, yeah, it could yeah, be you know, anything. anything. Like, I actually have a list. Let me let me pull that. Oh, is she? <laughs> yeah, my boy came <laughs> prepared. He's like, I got it. Yeah, it's because they. A lot of people always ask me like, who's your favorite artist? And then when I'm like in the moment, I'm like, it's like who do so I you say? Ask this a lot, yeah, huh? yeah. My boy's like, read the list. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just no, reading the screenshot. Put it up. Um, that's sick. Cause your music is very unique. Thank you, bro. Thank you. I think it was like. Not, I think it was last episode they asked, he asked me, like, well, he asked all of us, like, mm -hmm. why do you think Ivan's music is so, like, special? And I told him it's because I think that you listen to a lot of genres and then you just incorporate, like, for what you hear from here, mm -hmm. what you hear from here, and you put it all together, which is, like, what you create, right? For sure, yeah. I, I get, I listen to rock, alternative. I, so, my favorite artists are. These are out of order, so it's not like not in a specific order. Yeah, yeah. Nobody so get random, offended. So it's, it's not in order. I listen to X, Billie Eilish, Arctic Monkeys, J Cole, J Cortez, Frank Ocean, The Fray, Suicide Boys, Coldplay, Bon Iver, Kid Cudi, Radiohead, Brent Fies, Joji, Raúl Alejandro, Drake, and the list keeps going. You know, that's crazy. <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of artists. That's like a mixture of. All genres put together, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think we could see lot. those uh <coughs> go into your music, those yeah. like hints of. I actually got that vibe from like, I mean, I don't really listen to a lot of genres like you, but mm -hmm. at one point I was listening to Arctic Monkeys, and when you drop like Tatuajes, I think, like it just reminded me of like when I used to you listen got, to Arctic Monkeys. Oh, yeah, it's so <laughs> sick. It's like, cool, you mentioned it's, it, it's cool when people like can tell, for example, one time, like someone told me they they had they got the vibes of um joji i think or billy eilish and it felt so good because like when i was making these songs i was like very influenced by these artists Sick. 
like so many artists that influenced me with my music <clears throat> yeah i could definitely hear on the deluxe album i could hear a lot of a uh, like synth i don't oh, know if i'm saying yeah. right yeah, yeah and obviously yeah. i could hear the the kick and the drums and obviously sure. that comes to play with um the arctic monkeys and i think it's dope that you could people could actually see and translate okay you know there's there's the influence the influence is right there yeah. but like coming from your music that's regional mexicano it's mm -hmm. so different you know people are not probably not used to it yeah for sure it's so new to uh regional yeah because yeah. a lot of people i think regional is very like reserved and people that listen like to guitar, this type of music it's only organ, this you know yeah like the rules are strict mm -hmm. um so do you think that <clears throat> part of that sound and the white people like it and it sounds like fresh and new is because um you listen to a lot of other genres for sure yeah it's again like it's like i'm super influenced by um like a bunch of artists like it's like so many artists <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah another thing that i want to mention about well, what i notice about your music is you don't want especially on the new album because I'm, I'm sorry i'm referring to it a lot but it's just something no, that no, I notice no, is good. you don't use the bajeo no more is it a boom cha cha boom cha cha? It's more like oh, drumming. different, different yeah, yeah. drumming so patterns. I feel like, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like talk about that a little uh -huh. bit. Uh huh. Because no, like a lot of the songs that I would listen to in uh, regional mexicano, I they had that same pattern, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to like not just think regional. I wanted to think outside the box as well. You know, it, and it just I would listen to English rap, and I got I basically got all those little patterns and ideas, and just put them into one song or one album. Do you think the the traditional bajeo from the regional mexicano is kind of getting like boring, or maybe it got boring to you? No, I, I wouldn't say it's boring. I I just felt like it was missing it. It was missing this new, different strumming pattern and different. Man, that's key, dope, you know? bro. But it's not. It's not boring. I wouldn't say it's boring. It's. Would you still I use like it? it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll still use it. I'm still gonna use it. Same. <laughs> and then from the deluxe album, what was your favorite song? The deluxe <clears throat> is crazy. A lot of people ask me that, and I don't know what to tell them because, like, each one had its time. Where, for example, I made La Última Vez first, and and. It was my favorite for a long time until I made tatuajes and then I made tatuajes and that was my new favorite and then I made Ya Te Perdi and they're just all my favorite but if I had to pick one I would say it's Ya Te Perdi. Yeah. And is there a meaning behind every song that you write? Personal story maybe? Personal. Are they all like mm. about your life? Like um, personal experiences? No, I feel like <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> yeah, y'all putting my boy on the he's spot. Trying to, it's not to nah, say, nah, no. nah. Shit, we trying I to find like... out who Jay is. <laughs> That's still the question. We all got her, Jay. <laughs> if you're out there, you did a Thank favor. You, <laughs> you, <laughs> lost, <laughs> you lost the gem. <laughs> I feel like um. <laughs> my bad, man. <laughs> 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 we should have took him. We're gonna go right after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My bad, man. My bad, guys. He just farted. Sorry, I farted. What are you doing? Double, double, hurry up. What was the question? My bad. I oh shit. Um, um, if they're like about your meaning? personal experience. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So I feel like my songs and my lyrics are a little bit. You know, it's a little bit of everything. It's. A little bit about me, a little bit about what I think my fans are going through. I'm very, it's very open and um, general. So you kind of try to read like what your fans are going through and like what they'll relate to, and then you're like, I'm gonna make a song so they could yeah, feel yeah. something, like with. express themselves. With yeah, that. like I'll think, for example, um, está dañado, like the mi madre pregunta por ti, like. I felt like so many people were gonna relate to that, and they did. Cause oh no, I mean, I'm just like saying like yeah, <laughs> like, I'm like yeah. Like, Cause I feel like I, I, well, I mean, I remember you showed us that song when you came. I remember you came here once. Then yeah, that was yeah, you yeah. showed us Dañado, and then I was like, damn, she's a banger. Cause like I feel like as a guy, yeah. you don't really open up to your parents when like you're going through like a breakup or something like that, right? So For sure. that line of mi madre pregunta por ti. 
it's kind of like yeah. I remember, a guy would go through that because yeah. they wouldn't really tell their mom like hey you know like so we're she's done always gonna have, she's always gonna question like oh where is she you know and then the guy never talks about it like oh well, we broke up you know yeah oh, I remember yeah. you told us like oh this is the other perspective yeah yeah Huh. That's crazy, bro. You, I mean, yeah, that was so cool. That's a highlight of our life, I think. When you came <laughs> in and you uh, showed us yeah, the songs, yeah, you guys were one of the first to listen to that. Yeah, and since you had those songs ready for like a long time, how come it you took kind of long to drop Tanyado? Not the I deluxe one, the first, the the yeah. first album. Um, well, I mean, I feel like m me when it comes to like recording, I feel like I take forever because I'll, I'll record something and then. A month later, I'll listen to it and I'll be like, "It needs this. It needs this. It needs, mm. I need to take out that." You know, and I'm very perf. Uh, I'm a perfectionist? perfectionist when it comes to my music. And have you had the same producer the whole time, or you got a, a mm. new one? Yeah. So for the Dañado album, those it was seven. So it was seven songs. I I worked with. Um, just two engineers it was two engineers that helped me record that and um yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> so <Got it. laughs> so so uh that that first the album dañado it it was with just two engineers and just me and my cousin and whoever was right there in the studio that and then for the the looks and for the deluxe, um, we, I got in contact with this producer. His name's Frank Rio, and like, ever since we first met, um, we connected. He understood exactly what I wanted. Like, the first day we were, we started recording, he immediately like, the sound that was just coming out. I was like, bro, I'm gonna love this. I'm gonna love when it's finished. And we kept working and. We did all three songs, Tatuajes Ya Te Perdi and La Ultima Vez, and that's that's why they sound so different, because we worked with a producer this time, instead of just an engineer. Were they recorded here in, like, L.A., or you went somewhere else for that? Yeah, it was here in, like, uh, oh. it was in Long Beach. Sick. Yeah. That's really dope wow. that, you mean, you got someone else to, you know, listen to you and be like, hey, I want to do this, and they kind of bring it to live, you know? Yeah, yeah, because me and the producer, we, like, we threw each three we <laughs> we threw ideas at each other and like we just we we kept learning from each other so it's like i don't know like the sound was just so raw because we both connected really well it, it was definitely like a first of its kind in terms of like you know using those instruments yeah, and for your future yeah. projects would you you know do the same thing again for sure for sure and it would just be more like it wouldn't just be the same, but it, like adding on top of it. I would be adding on top <clears throat> of it. There's gonna be more, way more. Yeah, how important is it to for you to innovate in like all your new stuff? Yeah, I feel like music it changes every every two years, even a year, and I feel like it's important to always bring something new to the table when it comes to dropping music. Yeah. I have a question for you. So out of Everyone in the regional, who do you think is like the top artist? <laughs> <laughs> mm. He's like me, boy. <laughs> no, no. That's, I mean, regional. How many people that stand out to you? Like, there, there, there's a couple. I wouldn't. I, I don't know if there's like a main top one, but there's a couple. There's, I mean, there's Cristiano Nodal, of course. There's Pepe Aguilar. There's, like, I mean, it depends. Like, mm -hmm. just regional mexican or like corridos tumbados like that too like yeah all right corridos tumbados mm -hmm. i mean junior h and nata and th th they were on top They've do you consider top. yourself a top dog <laughs> um i wouldn't because i wouldn't really consider my my music corridos tumbados or just like you know like Mex mu Mex musica mexicana and stuff like that I wouldn't say top dog. Cause hey, hey, look at hey, this. My, my boy, <laughs> Charles, 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 Charles,
someone your age it's amazing, bro. Thank you. Bro. I'll tell you right. And now. then, like, how fast like you you blew up too. I know. And out of like all your achievements, what are you most proud of? There's a lot. There's a lot of achievements that I'm very proud of. Um, for example, winning my first Billboard award. Crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Just crazy. Um, being able to meet Bad Bunny, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> it happened like <clears throat> three days ago, which is it was crazy. I wouldn't say it's an achievement. It's just like the fact that that happened because of my music is is it brought you those crazy. It brought you how did that level. like happen how did, did he, like, happen? Appro- how did he approach you or how did uh it's a long story but basically we were me it was um me there was a lot of artists in there in in this little club and i think bad bunny was celebrating his um after his um tour ending so after his concert he went to that club and I seen he was like right behind me, and so I just pulled out the charts, and I was like, "Look, I I, I didn't I didn't really tell him anything. I was just like, like that, and just so like, maybe if he like he recognizes that, oh shit, you know, that's me. Yeah, yeah. Sick. And at first, at first he didn't really like he like he looked at me like from the side, and he was like, "What's this kid trying to tell me?" And then he looked at me again, and then I I showed him, and I was like, "That's me." That's me, and then, and then he he was like he was like oh eres tú like that eres tú yeah, yeah. Eres tú. yeah. and then um, yeah we we were just talking for a bit he told me that um, he was like wow like he was like felicidades hermano and I was like thank you so much was, like he actually dude, definitely has to know real you are, bro moment. you're like the person like right behind them you know yeah. when they drop you were you beat them so he he has to know bro. He's like, yeah, you know, he's that up? kid that beat me for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Should we be expecting anything? Oh, I wish. <laughs> uh, uh, you guys I didn't wish. talk anything about that? Like, No, no, I wish. Oh, yeah. uh, that would have been so No, maybe. <clears throat> no it, it was so quick. It happened so quick, but I'm, I'm still grateful for the fact he even put his arm around my shoulder. Dude. It was so crazy. It was a cool experience. Who took that picture? It was some guy that that was just right there, and uh, he 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 was like, "There's no way Bad Bunny's probably gonna be down for a picture, so might as well." You just know? take it, huh? Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> "Hey, yeah. shout out to that guy!" Though. Yeah, shout out yeah, to him. Shout out to Imagine you took it all blurry. <laughs> the like, mala foto, no, no. Uh, shout out to the guy. Yeah, bro. Another thing I noticed too is that like you kind of keep your life kind of private, huh? Yeah. Because it's like, well, I want to say that like, um, well, we kind of know where you are because mm-hmm. we follow certain people who. Like, let's say it was a Spotify after party, right? Oh, yeah. So we follow people and we're like, oh, look, Ivan's there. But, like, you don't really post much. Why is that? Yeah. I feel. I just feel like I wish I did, you know? But I feel like I'm just not too photogenic or social media-genic, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I suck when it comes to posting stories. <laughs> like, yeah. So you try to keep everything a little more reserved? Yeah. I mean, I don't mind posting stuff here and there, but it's like. If I get a cool picture of my food or something, then sure. But sometimes it comes out ugly. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah, like he's like, I, I, like I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes I do try to take a story, but I just it, it I'm like, it looks random. I'm not gonna post it. <laughs> he's like, it takes too much energy, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, nah, that's dope. And then, uh, which direction do you see your music going in? <laughs> hmm. I feel like. It's going in since I listen to a lot of like alternative, like old rock. I mean, new rock. Um, like a very indie rock. Mm-hmm. Obviously, not like hardcore rock, but like very soft rock. Like pop rock almost. Soul pop. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Soft rock. <laughs> and kind of. Going off of what Keko said, uh-huh. do you consider your music regional mexicano since you're using different elements? Um, I think I think so. Yeah, it, yeah, cause I feel like it's still in that category. It's just so much. It's just new, very new sounds in it now. Do you have a name for the sound that you bring, or or do you want to give it a name? You know, that's like Salsa de Reño, Correos Tombal. Yeah, yeah, you should give it I a name, bro. I think you could definitely bro. come up with something and people would. You think so? Definitely. Yeah, I feel like people would be like, oh, it's this because it's this. Mm. You know, the influence is just going to get carried on. You never thought about that? I feel like it's emo. emo? Obviously not just emo, but it's like 
emo soul. That because soul is like very like almost it almost sounds like church music where it's like, for example, soul is like Adele or like Ed. No, no, no. You're gonna say Ed Maverick. Ed. Yeah, oh yeah, like Ed Maverick too. Mm. He has a lot of influence on my music too. That's crazy. But it's like somewhere in the emo rock, it's like alternative, grungy. I don't know. Emo boy. There you go. Oh, now you're gonna start people like emo. singing that music and so saying like, emo. "Oh, that's what I do now." Because you've influenced a lot of people too to you know pick up the guitar and start singing. And yeah, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people um, <laughs> look up to you in that regard. Mm-hmm. It feels nice, like knowing that I'm an inspiration to others. Did you ever think you were going to inspire, like, all these thousands of people to pick up the guitar and post TikToks? And No, I didn't. I, I didn't. think not only for music, bro, but I think, like, even to us, like, you're an inspiration <clears throat> to us. Because, like, I remember, like, first meeting you, and we watched the episode of mm-hmm. this one. Yeah. And then we were kind of talking about how, like, I mean, we kind of grew a little, too, obviously not to, like, your level. You know, you you went, like, super crazy famous and shit. No. But... I think. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my point. No, no, no. The, uh, I know. He's, of, I, know how, the, I know. What he's trying to say. Brain, I know. <laughs> I know what he's trying to say. As you can see, he hasn't gotten a lot better since last time. Oh, what was I gonna say? Know that we've we've grown. You know. Oh at yeah, different you've paces. also like inspired us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you're young and you you're like proof that like it's possible. You know? yeah, it's yeah. Dude, I forgot my point. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Because um, <laughs> no, you know, we we followed you know ever since you've been on. Well, before we followed um your career and you know the achievements. We know we talked about your billboards. We talked about. Mm-hmm. Danielo, you know the deluxe and um it was like an inspiration for us you know to keep going and i was like look how oh, he's doing all this big stuff and you know we don't like it's not like trying to copy you know just no, no. trying to like do do good as well sure, yeah and it feels like again it feels it's cool that i'm influencing you guys and more people musicians and artists and i'm very grateful for that all right guys we are back from the break and now we want to talk about your tour, bro. Danielo tour. Sheesh. A lot of people are mad. A lot of people are upset. I the know. people who are upset are the people who didn't get a tour I'm date mad. in their city. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're like in Kentucky or something, you know. Sorry. <laughs> you're in Kentucky. <laughs> but, but yeah, bro, like in, you're... In your... Even in their own city, they couldn't get tickets. Yeah, like your tour sold out. The pre-sale, you said it was like 90%, right? Like 90%. Sold pre-sale. out. Yeah. Sheesh. And like, how do you feel that like... It's sold out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it for sure wasn't how quick I thought it was going to sell out. And I know everybody's asking why we chose small venues. Well, it was because um, our agency, you know, they recommended that for us for my first tour. And, you know, I just, we took the recommendation. They told us that it was a good idea, a great idea for my first tour. And, yeah, that's why it was super small venues. I think since it's small, it's definitely building a lot of hype because there is a part two, right? For sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's going to be a part two with more cities, you know. Bigger venues. Bigger venues for sure. And, um, yeah, so in a way it worked out because, you know, now there's hype for the second tour. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And this first tour is already sold out, so. We didn't get tickets, bro. <laughs> yeah, we I don't have that. tickets, bro. You want to hear a sad story? We didn't get tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we didn't get tickets, bro. <laughs> I just kidding. Like, not I, even one, dude. That's crazy. I kid you not, I myself don't have any, like, spare tickets. To well, I didn't say you don't have a ticket for me. <laughs> 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 I can't do it. No, it's all good, bro. But we'll definitely be ready. Next tour, next for time, sure. Next even, like, the website crashed. If you guys didn't know the website. Yeah, the website was crashing because there were so many people on the website. <laughs> And yeah, bro, the amount of TikToks I saw of people yeah. like that were sad. Some were like the happiest person in the world. The other ones were just sad. I literally told myself, I was like, I hope it sells out within the first month. And it sold out the first three days. <laughs> yeah. That's right. And how do you prepare yourself for a tour, you know? You know, this being your first tour. Yes. Well, you know, for sure, practicing with my cousin and our guitar player and just making sure that we give my fans a show, you know? Mm-hmm. I have a question. So you know how, like, in the Deluxe album, you brought this different sound with, like, the new producer? Oh, yeah. Are you going to, like, have those sounds at the tour? That's a good question. Right That's a good question. Um, I feel like we're still deciding. We're still deciding right now to... Because, obviously, if, if we do the 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 new sound it's gonna be performance wise is gonna be a lot different everything's gonna be a lot different more people and 
I think for this first tour, we're going to do a very acoustic and raw, mm. like, <clears throat> natural sounding. Like traditional serenity. Yeah, tra traditional for sure. So sticking to the sound of the of mm -hmm. the songs, because yeah. um, we, we've noticed that sometimes when they go to places, um, they add instruments. They say, you know, it's kind of to fill the place, you know, like more sound. The sound, yeah, the energy and just more people. Uh -huh. But I think people are expecting that. Exactly like how they've heard it a thousand yeah. times in the oh, room. I know. <clears throat> the good thing is that the songs, in a way, they still feel so raw. Like, they still feel so... I feel like, for example, Ya Te Perdi, if it, it sounds... It just sounds like me and my guitar, you know, but obviously with my voice in the background, the echoes, mm -hmm. and just everything affects. Can't yeah. wait. How long are you going to be performing for? Um, f Usually when I do, like, a regular concert, like, just a single concert, it's an hour, but we're still deciding for the tour how much, how long. Are you excited? We don't have tickets, bro. bro yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, tell us a little more because we're not going to be with you. Uh, <laughs> you can I tell know. us, but we can't physically be there. <laughs> And how was your first reaction when people were singing your songs at your first couple of shows that you had in, like, Colorado? And yeah, I, I had a show in Colorado, like, last month, and the the energy that the people gave me, even though I was sick and I, I literally was losing my voice and I was cough, coughing up, um, they they literally helped me sing the songs, and it just it was so nice being able to, you know, feels like the fans have your back always. Sick. Did you cry? <laughs> no, I, I didn't cry, but I was close to crying. <laughs> yeah. Borderline. Yeah. Imagine everybody in the stadium or arena or whatever, the venue, mm -hmm. you know, singing your songs. I mean, something that you wrote and created, you know, by yourself I or know. with your it, teammates. Yeah, it, it, speaks, so cool. it speaks volumes of the music of how fast it sold out because you have diehard fans, you know, like super loyal fans mm -hmm. that are invested, you know, in your music and that sound mm -hmm. why do you think that your music connects with people in like such a deep level um i feel like they connect with it because of the lyrics for sure the lyrics i feel like um whenever i write a song i try my best to make sure that it's for sure something my fans have gone through for sure all the 15 year old girls 16 year old girl and, and then not just that age i feel like <clears throat> older older the older generation older people will relate to it too in some kind of way with the lyrics for example ya te perdi i feel like people who have lost someone not just in a relationship but people who have lost someone when it comes to like um losing someone like someone passes away i feel like they could relate to that deeply. It was kind of like losing someone, like love, and then also like losing someone, like when they pass away and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good storytelling in your music too. You know. Thank you. Thank I you. think even for someone who's not feeling, like, let's just say, I I'm not real. like heartbroken, <laughs> <laughs> but when you drop like, <laughs> it was already going through. When it. you drop like <laughs> the deluxe, like I even I feel like, like shit, like what. It's fucking the music speaks for itself. I know. I thought I wasn't heartbroken yeah, until you dropped the, five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> five years, Angel. Yeah. And do you go know. to any concerts like junior age or? I'm I'm actually gonna be going to his concert that he's doing this Sunday. 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 Oh, the, the 18th yeah, at yeah, the Sunday. Microsoft. You're gonna be there. So, Are you gonna perform or just um, attend? It's like I can't. He's like, oh, I just buy your tickets. <laughs> uh, I think this will come out after the show, so you're performing. Uh, I'm, I'm not too sure if I'm performing. I don't think so, but that <laughs> no. would be dope. No, I definitely <laughs> want that backstage pass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, Jimmy. Yo, Jimmy, oh, Jimmy my boy. boy. You, know, I love you, know how we do, you know how we do it. RH all the way. <laughs> with Humble, ranch. Humble Ranch. <laughs> That's right. No, that's sick, bro. Friends are not going joke, we got. Yeah, it's like a joke because um, Jimmy... Well, Nata went <laughs> to perform with GOP, mm -hmm. and I texted Jimmy. I was like, "Hey, bro, can like I go meet Nata?" Yeah. And he texted the next day, so on the podcast, I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm mad at Jamie. But then like he got me to meet Nata. No way. So I've been like, "Ah, oh, you know, don't you meet all the way and shit." Like, <laughs> That's, That's his dumb. boy. That's my boy. Boy's yeah, what does wagon too. And you know, going on to <laughs> you know more deeper conversations, mm -hmm. do you feel like um, now that you know become far in this your in your career? Do you feel like the artists that you look up to, you kind of like, you know, pay you the respect or like, 
you know, te dan como ánimo in terms of like, bro, you're doing great, blah, 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 you know? Yeah, for sure. Like, the the artists that I used to look up to, like, have messaged me and they're like, hey, man, congrats, bro, on the success. And it's it's so unreal. It just, it's like, I know if I, if I would have, if I could be able to look, hold on, <laughs> if, if I was able to look at the future a year ago, I would have been so, like, Like, you wouldn't, wouldn't have been able, wouldn't have believe been able it. to believe it. And what are some artists, if you could say that, like have messaged you, like congrats or something? Um, Chato has messaged me. Um, I can't think of on the J-O-P? top of my head. Let me, let me. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? For, yeah, JLP, um, Esteban Gabriel, like just artists that I used to listen to back then and I never thought I would be like. Texting Rather your them peers. or communicating yeah, with them, which is so peers. cool. That's yeah, peers. That's crazy, bro. I remember you also saying, I think it was in the first podcast that you went to the Herencia de Patrones, like, meeting Freedom group or something me. like oh, that? It, and yeah, you signed your guitar? JD, yeah, JD, too. It's just so dope. I'm a big fan of JD. And for him to be able to reach out to me sometimes, it's dope as fuck. Yeah, bro, I want to ask you, too, like, you've obviously achieved a lot of stuff. Who do you owe your success to? Mm, I I owe it to a lot of people, I feel. I mean, just, f- for example, my friends, when they would, like, tell me to, oh, bring your guitar and, like, to jam out or something, or the producer that I'm now working with, he's a big part of my new music now, and uh, my family and my fans, of course. They're, I, I owe it to them most. And you also have a... A badass videographer, bro. The Johnny. Oh yeah, my boy Johnny. He, he Johnny Rager. Down, bro. Johnny Rager. No, I really like the music video that the last one you took out. For sure. I was telling him, I feel like it's a movie. <laughs> huh. That's what I said. Yeah, like he, he, him too. Like he, he was, he was, he's a part of the process too. Someone I'm grateful for, and he, I like, I like his work because you know he, he understands what I want, and it just comes out. The way I want it. Yeah, like he's able to put that out there. For sure, yeah. And I also <laughs> want to add that it kind of fits the vibe of your music because, I mean, Diego mentioned that you're um, influenced by, I mean, you said it yourself that you're influenced by like Arctic Monkeys and like mm-hmm. I kind of see, I mean, the s- more of the alternative rock and yeah, I see yeah. those music videos and I could be like, bro, this, this yeah, goes with what I've been seeing. More you know, connected, yeah, yeah, the vibes. And I feel like, you know, he does it well. Mm-hmm. So congrats on that too. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it even pushes that feeling that you're that you give with the song even further. Like yeah. you know that visual and and I feel like it's more. Uh huh. My bad. I I feel like the music video has to do a lot too. Like if like if you drop a song, some people might not like it until they see the video because once they see the video and they connect to it visually, I I feel like it influences it a lot too. Mm. The visuals. Another dimension to the story. Exactly. Yeah. It's one big picture that you're, mm-hmm. you know, creating in terms of music and the videos. I think it's dope. And then you succeeded. You got us crying. <laughs> <laughs> and what's new for Ivan Cornejo in 2023? In music-wise? Music-wise, there's going to be new sounds and just... I feel like every time I drop an album, it it evolves a little bit more, little by little, you know? So <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what the <laughs> fuck? Oh, <laughs> no. Was it just my... <coughs> no, it was the neighbor. Oh, I thought it was the headphones. Were the <laughs> Sorry about that. No, you're good, you're good. Um, what were we talking about? Okay, maybe we could redo I that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great question, Kako. Ask you. What's new for Ivan? Oh, what's new for Ivan Cornejo in 2023? There's going to be, for sure, like, improvement. There's going to be... M- It's going to be more evolved, and I feel like lyrics-wise and sound-wise and production-wise, for sure. Should we be expecting new duetos coming out, and, or you're just going to drop an album just by yourself? Mm, there's going to be a couple duetos, you know. Any singles? Any singles. Or, or, or are we expecting mm. an album next again? I think just another album. You're already working on it, I would bet? Yeah, we're, we're slowly working on that now. Is it kind of like you do your tour and then you drop an album and then like maybe like another tour? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never done a tour, so I feel like 
how I want to plan it out is I want to work on it a little bit before I go into tour, come back out of tour, and then just all that time I have just to really, because I don't like rushing my music either, too. And what is it? T- <laughs> <laughs> and what? I say, say a bad word. <laughs> Bro, this guy. Go. And since you're a full time musician now, what does a typical day look for you? No, wait. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Let me ask that. My boy's like, don't doubt yourself. Let me ask that again. Yeah. And we're, we're gonna cut no, it. we're not. <laughs> I'm not cutting it off. He's the editor. <laughs> Now that you're doing music full time and it's your career, how does the typical day look for you as a musician? Uh, it, it the week is very scattered to be honest. Like sometimes, sometimes I'll go out to do a podcast, for example, or sometimes I'll go do a, like an interview, or sometimes I'll have to go to Mexico to do just you know just uh, network and just. Build connects. Build connections. Yeah, it's really important. Bro, you're you're busy. I remember when we were supposed to have you last week. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Your sister was saying like, oh, you know, he's available from this time to this time. Then he has to take a flight in <laughs> San Diego and go yeah, to Mexico. Yeah. Like, yeah. Damn. Oh yeah, that day, that day that we were gonna do the podcast, I had it like two hours later after the podcast, I'd have to go to TJ to fly out to Mexico. Would and, you? And he met Bad Bunny. <laughs> oh Bad yeah. Bunny. Would you yeah, say when, that when? your life is more fast paced now? Yeah, yeah, that's something that I could say that changed. You know, I'm constantly traveling. What does your family tell you now? <laughs> well, what I do mean, your parents tell you? Are they proud of you? Oh, of course. Yeah, they they're proud of me, of course, and they just always tell me to be careful whenever I go out. Just wishing me the best. I'm wishing well. Mm-hmm. Do you have any like people? Let's just say from like school that you know once never talk to you or anything mm. message you like hey we went to hey, school my boy. my boy like, I, I missed you, you. Miss so, so my bro, we- <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean all the time I I just I'm pretty sure like back then was when I would notice it because I wouldn't get too many messages mm-hmm. but now it's like I, I haven't really seen one because I'm always getting fan messages yeah, damn or oh, like the request you probably get like 30 messages every minute huh Mm, I wouldn't say every minute, maybe like, it, it's hard to tell, I don't yeah. know, maybe like two every every Second. ten minutes, five minutes. Bro, I don't know if you've seen, there's a TikTok, oh, it's viral. Gonna, I was going to say that. Well, there's two that I want to talk about, oh, yeah. mm. but there was one where it was like, I work with Ivan Cornejo's dad, and oh. then your dad was showing like your... Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw it? Yeah, I seen that, yeah. And what, the, the one where it's like, I went to school with Ivan Cornejo. I see. The yearbook. Sheesh, <laughs> that had like, a, like half a million likes half or something million, like that. Yeah crazy bro. must be crazy skater face and you always were into music since you were young right i've seen that the violin? picture of play, you playing the violin oh, yeah 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 i feel like it's always been in me like i i started with i want to say it, it was 50 50 so i started guitar and violin at the same time so but but i feel like the guitar just always it always grabbed my attention more for sure yeah because one one thing that i remember from the last podcast was saying that you had started with the violin like long long time ago you said something like 10 years or something uh-huh. like that oh yeah yeah like so that's one thing that you know started, sometimes my people think that like you just blew up or i don't know where but yeah. it had been 10 years i've been playing the guitar for like 10 11 years now yeah and then also i wanted to ask too like where do you get your like style of clothes <laughs> inspiration from or, like where do you shop i mean honestly, you have a fashion designer Fan and who style. inspires you? Like, who do you look at? Like, <laughs> oh, I like those shoes. I like. Honestly, my style when it comes to dressing is it's very random. Like, uh, it's cool. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say this it's is my cool. style, but it's like I had I had this in my closet today, and it gives me like Kanye vibes. You know, like the boots. Damn. Yeah. Feature with Kanye coming soon. <laughs> 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 you like Kanye? Um, or just yeah. like his style because he's kind of weird now, no? <laughs> <laughs> his style is cool, bro. Oh my god, his that style was... is a little random. It's very, it's cool. I like it. Yeah, I like your style. <laughs> thanks, thanks. It's like, I like your music and, and your, your style, style. <laughs> and your eyes. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> That's why you forgot the question. I forgot the question. <laughs> Damn. Damn, bro, we're gonna have to make a before you're famous video <laughs> so we can see oh, the time. Oh, how we wanted to. No, 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 I I have it. 
I have everything. Oh, you have the video ready to go? Yeah, him playing Tug of War too. Tug of War? Tug of War? Oh <laughs> my goodness. Oh, <laughs> from the Beats thing? What? Or, there's like a video of me as a little kid where I'm like... Playing Tug of War? Tug of War, yeah. Are you, Why does Gecko have that on his phone? Uh, Damn, you can you talk about that a little bit? I think that was badass that Beats got you to like, oh. feature with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was so cool working with them. I, um, we did like a little like a mini commercial just talking about my growth and how I started. And it was cool. The visuals how were cool. How do you put them on? Yeah, the visuals. How does uh I went and bought how them. does someone like Beats reach out to you? Is it like through it's, your agency or like they message you directly? How it's does very that very random sometimes, but usually through through the agency mm -hmm. or my label. That's sick. Yeah. Bro. Now, maybe getting into per not personal life, but yeah, personal life. You have a girlfriend, single, casado. <laughs> casado. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Divorced if you want. Divorced. Divorced. Now, right now, I'm just just working on music. He's like, all right, I have a question. Focusing now. on work. He's like, I'm here for the vibe. So, like, <laughs> yeah, obviously, voice, uh, I'm sort of a lot of girls, you know, they want. To be with Ivan <laughs> Cornejo, right? You get me? Like, to them, you're like, sure. who they want to be with. Yeah. What is your, like, dream girl? Like, you could describe her. Dream girl? Or what do you look, what do you look what at? Do you what girl? what matters to you? It's a good question, bro. Like, what kind of girls are you into? So those that are, well, like. Like, what's my type? Yeah. Yeah, what's your type? I mean, I don't discriminate any any kind of girl, but I feel like it's, like. Your preference. Oerita. With <laughs> like nice eyes or something or like let her eyes stand out. They're like Who's she looking at? <laughs> <laughs> like no <one. laughs> He's like, why were you looking at him? Oh, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah bro. No, I'm asking because like I'm pretty sure a lot of girls want like they're obsessed with Ivan, they probably DM him, but if you fit the description, the hey, pero no se <laughs> then. would you be in a long distance relationship? Long distance? Um, how long distance? Like, I can't see her for too long, or she lives far away. Oh, she lives far away. She lives far away. Like, how far away? <laughs> <laughs> There's like a certain it's mile depends. radius. <laughs> She's like, if you're within the 200 mile like, radius, I don't know. Uh, um, right here to Oregon. <laughs> that's too far. No, Dude, like, no, like, North Carolina. What about it's like two hours? Like, drive. you had to drive like two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. You asking for yourself or what? <laughs> <laughs> like two and a half hours to like Yo, that's Lancaster. too specific. That's well, I don't know. It's going to be two hours, but maybe like, like, like two, two and a half hours. My boy in a situation. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just a general question. It's like three it was... hours on Saturday. <laughs> um, I feel like that may, might be a, a little long. I don't know. It, it depends, you know. But two hours is a little long. It's it's a drive, you know. You might have to take a Red Bull every time when you're driving. Did you end up getting your license? Boy, yeah, you your license. <laughs> Next question. Uh, you got a car though, right? Yeah. Sick. What kind of car is it? It's a uh, it's a Mercedes. Yeah. Because okay, always talking about how he wants it. Yeah, G sixty four three. He's like big riding pants. <laughs> Look, your neck is on top of the charts too. <laughs> <laughs> He's another charge now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right, guys, we are back from the break. And here we have, you want to present your cousin, bro? There, we got my cousin, the one that's behind all the bass you hear in my songs. Yeah. How my you guys boy. doing? What's up, what's up? <laughs> guys, over here we have all the Alejandro, bro. How does it feel like to be Ivan's cousin and always listening to, like, his music from, like, scratch? Mm, and you being a part of it. It's, it's dope because, like, you know, we'll come up with, like, a flow or, like, some lyrics. And, you know, like, two or three months later, like, the song sounds like completely different from what it did yeah. when we first made it, you know. But it's just so cool to see it like become from some like nothing into something, you know. Yeah, and um, also you came from Texas. From Texas, yeah. And to oh, dedicate your like <laughs> <laughs> to like go full time musician with Ivan. Yeah. So um, so it's kind of long, but um, so I was sixteen. I think I was like in ninth grade and I was working like at this pizza place, but I bought a bass and it was, it was, Ivan came to Texas and he brought his guitar and I was like, damn, like, you know, can I cuss? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, I was, <laughs> I was like, damn, like, you know, the sound is dope. And 
so I was working and I got paid like that next Friday and so I bought a bass and so like I was working from 7 a.m. to so to 7 p.m. Uh, six days a week so like before I would go into work and after I would get out I was always practicing and so um like a month or two later my dad called Ivan's dad and he was like hey like um like we're gonna send him over there for the weekend you know that way you know him and Ivan could practice a little bit and <laughs> and um so Ever, yeah my and bad. so my bad. and um <laughs> so I went for the weekend and we went to the studio and we did what Yamalas I think yeah so it's a long story but basically like we have like a bunch of versions of Yamalas and he was there when we recorded the first version like the very first versions there's like at least like four versions of it that didn't come out and he helped me record the first version and ever since like he's just always we always he lives with me now basically so you went to just staying over for the weekend to like stay so we stay for the week or i stay for the weekend and um and then i don't know how it came up but me and ivan started talking about like me moving over here to california and I was like, low key, like if you ask my parents, they might let me. And so we called them. And at first, my parents were like, no, like, you know, you're still young, like you're 16, you're working, you're still in school. And I was like, yeah, like, but, you know, I'll do all that over here. And so we convinced them. And then I think like two or three weeks later, I ended up moving over here. They sent all my clothes. <laughs> <And everything. laughs> yeah, so you know, it was dope. Yeah, and like dope. you also share like the stage with Ivan. Like, do you get nervous on stage? Yeah, I get nervous. Like before we go up, like you could hear everybody outside, like just screaming and yeah. stuff. And you know, it gets me a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, so both of you guys were one hundred percent committed to to the project. You just moved out from Texas. Yeah, I moved out when I was sixteen, and just been going at it ever since. Nice. Like they say, the rest is history. <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, shout out to the parents too. You know that believed in them and yeah, uh, they're, they're let them. See, like his parents are one of our biggest supporters for sure. Shout yeah, out, bro. shout out to my Give a shout to your parents. What's up? <laughs> 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 like, thank you for letting me come to camp. <laughs> yes, yeah. What are you guys gonna play for us today? We're gonna play you guys first time ever. What song should we do? All right, let's see. Let's figure that out. Let's Damn, bro. I wish you could play your whole album. Uh, this is just practice real quick. Okay. Disculpame, bebe. Por molestarte, sé que es tarde. Regresalo para atrás. Mi felicidad. Pensé que conocí. La persona de Ay, baby Perdí Me duele Saber Que tú amas A él Tu amor Fue yo Tú eres La Arrancas mis greñas cuando pienso en recuerdos. El tiempo torturas a mi cuerpo. Let's try that talk. Oh, man. Say, Y mi corazón hasta el mundo entero Te di todo el control, nada te convenció Viste en pedacitos enfrente de mi cara No te importó todo el dolor lleno en mi mirada Y ahora te ves feliz, vendiste tú con él Aunque no sea conmigo, te deseo bien Quiero saber lo que tú ves en él, que no viste en mí un día tú vas. Damn, this one's hard to sing. Es que me pongo celosa. Yo, the singer. 
Damn, dude. I wish I could sing. And if I could wish I could sing, I could wish I could sing. Like How does that start? Oh, it may live on. I'll give you the UI lyrics because oh. I pull it up. No, no, it's cool. I, just, I, just, I always forget how my song starts sometimes. <laughs> cool. Damn, bro. So, what are you going to play for us today? So, yeah, we're going to be playing. We're going to be playing Tatuajes for the first time live. Cheers. Hope you guys enjoy. Muchas gracias por la primicia. Hoy me levanté llorando. Tuve un sueño especial que era mi ya en verdad. No importa dónde estoy, no importa dónde voy. Donde me encuentre no es igual sin ti Pero quiero saber lo que tú ves en él Que no viste en mí Un día tú vas a ver y te vas a arrepentirte Es que me pongo celoso en pensar que tus tatuajes van a tocarte en las noches más té de flores sin poder hacer nada me encelo te veo bien feliz él es la mejor versión de mí sé que duele viéndome en la tele tú sabes bien que no vas a olvidarme no vas a poder borrarme tampoco evitar Yo, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. Damn. <clears throat> My voice sounds so bad, but... No, nah, bro, it sounds good. And I, I mean, I told you this the first time that, you know, you came to the podcast, but one of the things that I really like about you is that you put, like, sentiment, sentimiento into the song, like, mm -hmm. with your face expressions. And then even, like, listening to the the album, like... Feel that. Yeah, you can feel that. Like, I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I try my best to make sure everybody feels this music, you know. And I also on break, I asked Ivan if he takes any like vocal classes or anything. And he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, That's I, crazy, I, I need bro. to though. I suck bad. <laughs> what other song can you guys like play for us? I got you. Um, mm, you guys want La Última Vez or Ya Te Perdí? Yeah, so uh, hey. La última vez. La última vez. Si sí se puede. Ay, baby. Muchas gracias, everybody, watching the podcast until the end. It means a lot to us. La última vez. Fácilmente a todos se enamora, se enamora. Hoy es como piensas que se me va a borrar tan fácil de a despegarme, de a olvidarme, no va a ser tan fácil. Te deseo. que me marcabas a mi cara a mi cuero todo es 
pasaba Quise hacerte feliz y verte sonreír Pero yo pienso que este cuento ya llegó a su Cómo olvidar cuando me bailabas Cómo explicar cuánto yo te amaba Quise hacerte feliz y ver una sonrisa Damn, bro. Damn. Crazy. Crazy. Crazy to hear this live. Huge shout out to the fans, because if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't have been able to bring Ivan here. Shout out to the fans. And like, shout out to the fans. No, real. this is cool to hear Ivan live. So we won't, since we don't have tickets. Since we <laughs> I know. Yeah. No, but it's cool that you know. Next you guys, you guys need to hear this live. So make sure that next time you post that there's another tour. Make sure you put your alarms, get your tickets <laughs> because you guys need to hear this at least once in your life. Dude, I oh my god, I wish I should have got tickets, bro. Imagine listening to this. I'm gonna hook like, you guys up next, next. Week. No, no, yeah, for next, sure, bro. Next, next, next. next, 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 no, no, next. No, no, now we already got hooked next. up today. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, well, like you coming, like makes. Like, yeah, it means a lot to us, bro. Course, Damn, well, bro. thanks for coming on to the podcast. Of course, bro. taking the time out of you guys' very busy schedule. Thank you for bringing them, it means a lot to us. <laughs> Shout and out to Ivan's sister because she's the boss. The boss, the hermana boss. year. The hermana year. <laughs> Anything that you want to tell to the fans? You know, I'm very thankful for the support and for you know giving me my dream job. Thank you guys too for giving hold me hold hold <laughs> I, I want, I want, I, I don't want to be the annoying one, but can we get a little piece of the other one? Uh, yeah, Which yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I be... This is for the fans. I know you guys wanted to hear this live, so <laughs> comment down. Shout out to Diego W De Diego, because I know you guys yeah, wanted yeah, to hear yeah, this live. Yeah. <laughs> I set up the audio. Show me. <laughs> nah, everyone, comment. Thank you, Diego. Shout out to you guys. que me abandonaste ya nada es igual ya no soy el mismo de antes no sé cómo aceptar y mis fines de semana ya no suenan igual la emoción que estuvo antes se marchó ya no está Discúlpame bebé Por molestarte sé que es tarde Regresalo para atrás Mi felicidad Pensé que conocí La persona antes Ya te perdí Me duele saber que tú amas a él Tu amor fue hecho de pato Eres la mujer Arrancas mis reñas cuando pienso en recuerdos el tiempo torturas a mi cuerpo cuando yo pienso en ti que no ves que veo mi futuro ver con mi rostro un pedazo de mí ay baby ya te perdí I'm not crying you guys are crying so I'm not who cut onions <laughs> no, wow. not for real, bro. Like, thank you for taking the time to come. It means a lot. Thank you to your sister. We're loyal fans. To we've you kept get. up with your career every step of the way. <laughs> um, means a lot to us, you know, to have in the space. And we wish you the very best. We wish you even more. You know, thank to your whole you. team. For sure. Um, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. next time we come on, you you come on like we have like some other crazy new achievements that. You know, you yeah. accomplished and for sure, yeah, that will happen. We're wishing you the very best. And we're always Thanks. here to support you, bro.
Thank bro. you so much. We stream your songs. Thank like, you guys for having me. Thank you guys for watching to the end of the podcast. I know a lot of you guys watched to the end. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and of course, listen to Ivan's music. Get him back up on number one. Let's do it. Be yeah, Bad Bunny. Right. And yeah, guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank, thank you. Guys. Guys. I only want clapping, fool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, awkward, bro. Why are you Where's the Polaroid?